In this video, I'm going to discuss the basic steps of setting the throws on your control surfaces of a flying wing. Now, in my case, this was the very first time I've ever set up control surfaces, so I do not consider myself an expert. So what I'm going to do is show you the steps and things that I found were necessary for me to even make sure that were in place before I started, and then the basic things that I did to get it done. I'll make sure at the end of the video to provide you a link over to another gentleman. He has a couple of really, really excellent videos on how to set up control surfaces. He has a much better camera setup and lighting system than I do, and he's able to provide a much more clear and detailed explanation of how to do it properly. Plus, if I understand correctly, he's also one of the iNav devs. And so you know that when he's talking about um, setting up these control surfaces, you know he knows what he's talking about as a true expert. This is something that's new for me. I'm trying my best to set it up correctly, and uh, I think I have, but I want to make sure that you also have the chance of doing it correctly, and so I'm going to pass you off to some of the resources that helped me along the way to make sure that you can do it correctly. So, having said all of that as my introduction, there are a few things you need to get set up and make sure are set and ready before you even get into the process. So to begin, you need to make sure that you have your flight controller installed into the wing with iNav installed in it, and it needs to be able to talk to your remote control. And so you've got that set up so that you know that your remote control will talk to the flight controller. It will move the servos in the directions that they should be moving. That is something that can be changed um, inside of iNav. Any settings that you do to set this up should be done entirely in iNav, and you should do no kind of setup inside the radio other than assigning switches and making sure that the gimbals are set to move the servos in the right directions. Beyond that, there should be no other setup necessary in your radio. We'll do all of the rest of the setup inside the flight controller using INAF. So having made sure that that sort of physical structural part is working, that your servos are connected and will talk through INAV, that your radio will talk to them and get the servos to move as they should, that's the first main step towards getting everything set up. Before you actually do the testing of and setting of the throws themselves, you should make sure that especially in this in this build here we're using the AR wing there's a strut that goes all the way across the bottom that connects across to the servo horn you need to make sure that that is glued in very firmly there is very little or zero wiggle in it in any direction you want that to be very firm and properly mounted in there so that there is no flex and and no wiggle in it that is also true with the main servo itself now depending on the wing that you happen to be building the servo location might be a little bit different but for this AR wing pro the servo was actually mounted right into the wing and you can ac access the control horn on the top but I've personally found that getting at the nuts and the bolt here to, to loosen it, to make adjustments on the servo was really difficult. This was a very small space to work in. And so I didn't securely glue this in or set it in with any kind of tape while I was doing the testing because I still needed to be able to pop it out every once in a while to make the adjustments. However, it is a very tight fit, and while I was doing the testing, I made sure to hold it in place so that the servo itself wasn't wiggling and that the control arm here didn't have any kind of flex in it, which could happen if the servo was not securely mounted. After the throws are set, you need to mount that in securely with some double-sided tape or many people recommend putting some hot glue on the inside and then pressing the servo in. 
you can make your own choice on how to do that. I've just used some double-sided tape on the inside. Having made sure that all of those control places are firmly installed and don't have any play and wiggle in them, the next thing that you need to do before you do any other kind of setup is adjust the length of this overall rod before you've set up anything else so that when it's in its neutral position, and I'm going to try to focus here, you will have a straight line across the wing so that there's no flex up or no flex down and so that it just comes in a straight line from the top of the wing to the top of the control surface and same for the top as the bottom. And what you will do is you will adjust this length by simply screwing the bar in or out of one of the connectors here and that will get it to being very very close to where it needs to be before you actually start trying to set up the proper distance throws using your radio controller. Okay, so having done all of that, you're basically now ready to get into the, the steps of using your radio with iNav to make sure that the distance of the throws are set correctly. Now, what we need to do is we need to know what is Again, I'll try to see if we can focus in here. What is the maximum distance that we would like this control surface to move up? And what is the maximum we want it to move down? For this particular model, the directions, the manual tell us that it should be a maximum of 12 millimeters up and a maximum of 12 millimeters down. So there'll be a total of 24 millimeters top to bottom. And so you need a way to be able to measure that. And there's many ways you can do it. You can just use a simple ruler like this, steel ruler. Uh, many people will make a little card like this that just has the distances measured. There's a zero point and 12 up, 12 down that you can use. And you could even use something like a, just a pair of calipers and measure it out to 12 millimeters and use that as your measurement. And however you choose to do it is fine. But the important thing to remember is that when you measure, and I'm just going to attach the wing a little bit here better, you need to measure from the same surface. So when you measure, you need to measure 12 millimeters from the top of here to the top of the control surface. You don't go from the top of the control of the of the wing to the bottom of the control surface. What you need to be able to do is measure top to top. So from the top of this surface to the top of that surface. Or alternatively, you can do bottom to bottom. You just simply need to use the same place on the top of the wing and the top of the aileron. Elevon in this case, sorry, in, in this case it's an Elevon, or you can measure from the bottom and the bottom. And making sure that that's the case, you'll then be able to find the 12 millimeters and the 12 millimeters down. Realistically, that is basically what you need to know in order to go through setting up the control surfaces. What you'll now do is attach a LiPo so that you're connected into your system and the servos are activated and that you'll be able to talk with your radio. You'll need to make sure that your radio is set into manual mode and then you'll be able to use your control sticks to see how far they currently move. And then from that you'll need to make adjustments to both the length of the control rod and also the location of the horn where it is on the servo and perhaps even where the controller connects to the top of the rod. That unfortunately for me and my camera setup is beyond my ability to to film properly and to be able to show you a proper way of, of how to do that. 
And so like I said at the outset, what I'm going to do now is really suggest that in order to see how to do this in a very clear and uh, easy way, I would really recommend watching um, this video by, uh, by I believe his name is Darren and uh, goes by Falling With Style. Very easy to watch, very easy to understand, and will make the steps and the process of how to do it much more clear uh, than I feel that I'm capable of doing at this point.